Before we begin the interview, we need to formally state a couple of things for the record. First, my name is Steve Arionis with TCU, and we're here today recording an interview for the Civil Rights in Black and Brown Oral History Project. Today is July 21st, 2016, and I'm here with Lupe De Hoyos right. in Del Rio, Texas. Mr. De Hoyos, um, I will ask you a number of Black History questions, and we can talk for as long or as little as you want. Participation in the interview is voluntary. The interview will be recorded, but you can ask us to go off the record, turn off the camera and go off the record at any time you wish. Okay, I know how it works. Yeah. Um, you may also end the interview at any time you want. You're right. Um, I've left you our contact information. Sure. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact okay. us. Do you have any questions? No, not at this time. Okay, let's begin. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, your early life growing up? Uh, what year you were born, um, where you grew up? Um, I was born in um, March 18, 1937, here in Del Rio. My um, parents were Ramon de Hoyos and Maria Castorena de Hoyos. My daddy was born here in 1907 in, in Del Rio, Texas. My mother was born in Mexico in 1916. Um, we were proud to be um, descendants from um, old Mexico. My granddaddy came in uh, to the United States in uh, 1892. He was seven years old. And uh, he came in with uh, an uncle. And um, you must realize that things weren't the same in the um, late um, 1800s or even in the early 1900s. So, my uncle used to work on the railroad, so he used to, he, he, he used to take my, uh, gran, uh, my uh, granddaddy to work. He was seven years old, and my granddaddy became a water boy. He used to take water to the people working on the, on the uh, uh, railroad. And, um, but anyway, uh, anyway um, we, uh, we grew up. My granddaddy, my, my dad had the same uh, business. They were cheap chariot captains. And... Um, Way back there, Valverde County was the wool and mohair capital of the world. So we had all, gosh, we had uh, thousands and thousands of sheep and goats. And my daddy and my granddaddy, they, both of them had business, and they used to uh, shear the uh, goats and the uh, uh, sheep from uh, the ranchers around Comstock uh, and then the Valverde County mostly. Later on, my dad uh, went on to um, Wyoming and South Dakota and Montana and did the same thing. Uh, worked up there, sheep shearing. No goats up there, too cold for, for goats. And uh, that's how my daddy did his uh, living and supported our family. I come from a family of eight, five girls and three boys. They all live now with the exception of my brother, Pete. Pete was two years younger than I was, and he died 20, 23 years ago. And um, my um, family, um, they're all well educated. Uh, I have um, a sister in Soveda in California. I have um, a brother in, um, in San Antonio, well educated. Uh, a, 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 a retired uh, veteran, two sisters there, well-educated in San Antonio, Sylvia and Rachel. And then I have um, a sister here in Del Rio, Linda Polanco. And then I have um, another that lives part-time in Costa Rica in around College Station. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, th that's my family, but they're all scattered. I myself have three kids. I have Adam, lives in San Antonio. My um, daughter, Jessica, lives in Dallas, and my son, younger son lives in Houston. And, okay. Um, well, I was going to ask, um, did, did you grow up in Del Rio? I grew up in Del Rio. <clears throat> we, were, um, we went to parochial school. There was a Catholic school named... Our Lady of Guadalupe, 
And uh, we went through, uh, well, m most of us went there. I went up, I went to Guadalupe after the seventh grade. Then I transferred to public school because I wanted to play football. And um, the um, school that I went to, Guadalupe did not have sports or anything. So in the November of uh, 51, I uh, transferred to uh, to, Del, uh, to San Felipe schools. Did you grow up in the San Felipe area, or? Yeah, we live right in the uh, right in the uh, the main street, Garza Street. Mm. As a matter of Garza Street, whoever lived on Garza Street was somebody, <laughs> according to from what I hear. But uh, yeah, my grandfather lived next door, and uh, he had acquired the whole block uh, since 1917. So we, uh, at first we lived in, uh, in one of the houses that uh, my grandfather had given to my dad. And then we rebuilt uh, one in uh, 60. By that particular time, my uh, siblings, my, uh, mainly the, uh, the girls, which were younger, enjoyed living in a new home <laughs> in 1961. Can you tell us a little bit about the neighborhood you grew up in? What was it like? Um... Was it all uh, Mexican-American, Mexicano? At the time, they, they were all, with the exception, in 1954, we had a, a sergeant, an Anglo sergeant from the base that lived by the block from where we live. But 99.9 .9 or 99.99, .99, uh, we were all the Latinos. And most of the Latinos, we didn't know, but most of them were real poor. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know we were poor because we were pretty much alike and mm -hmm. homes were pretty much alike mm -hmm. and uh, maybe some had a little bit more mm -hmm. than others. I think our family might have been a little bit, but uh, we never did uh, yeah. uh, s talk about it. And, and uh, But yeah, we, we grew up, it was a real friendly neighborhood, um, old school, old culture. Most of our parents and the parents of our kids, uh, of our friends came from Mexico. So um, pretty much the same. And uh, it was beautiful growing up, of course. A um, lot of sacrifices and there are a lot of things that we didn't have. Our school didn't have a cafeteria. Uh, our stadium, we had to build it ourselves. The high school was built by the uh, community. When we became uh, uh, independent in 1929, it became a district. Prior to 1929, all of the schools here, in, even in Del Rio, there was no such thing as Del Rio Independent School District. They were called common school, common district. And in, in the San Felipe area, we had two, uh, school number one and school number two. School number one was Stephen F. Austin. School number two was Sam Houston. And likewise, in, in the Del Rio area, there were common schools and uh, you had to, uh, one for the black high school, then we had one elementary for the blacks in San Felipe. And then, uh, of course, Del Rio had quite a few common schools. And then the Comstock, Langtree, and Juno, they, was, they were still in our county. They were all common schools there, mm -hmm. until later on they uh, became uh, independent and Comstock Independent School District, Del Rio Independent School District. But at the beginning, they were called common schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we all grew uh, yeah, together. It was uh, um, most of the, uh, the kids, we, we knew each other, bonded each other from the first grade on. We kept, school was real small at the time. Uh, graduating class, the first graduating class of uh, 32 was seven. As a matter of fact, Dolly's uh, mother and, and her aunt were, were two of the seven. Mm. And Mr. Calderon, uh, her father-in-law, was one of them. So that's three out of seven. <laughs> and uh, one of them, uh, one of them is still alive. He's 104, I think. Oh wow, wow. Mr. Osuna, Arnulfo Osuna, and uh, that was uh, 1932, the first class. Yeah, we, gotcha. We, we knew each other, and, and uh, we all kind of. Uh, Hang around together, and uh, it was it, it was beautiful. Uh, there were a lot of things going on at the time. There, uh, 
the um, swimming pools. We couldn't use swimming pools. Yeah. And uh, a little bit prior to when I was in high school, uh, theaters, you had to sit up, and, you know, um, second floor. Or, and uh, But other than that, um, you know, it was kind of, schools were kind of like family. Um, our parents uh, used to join the PTA just to keep an eye on what we were doing. Yeah. And um, it was beautiful. It's a, it's a different environment what it is today. Yeah. Uh, it's a, today it's um, fast and teaching is not like it used to. Um, although things have changed a lot, uh, technology has changed the way of uh, teaching. And, uh, but um, uh, that's uh, that's uh, else, uh, everywhere. Where did the Anglo students go to school during when you were uh, a child? Oh, um, okay. The they were going to uh, at the time it was already Del Rio district. Mm -hmm. On this side of the San Felipe Creek um, was uh, the Del Rio district, and like I said, it was mainly about sixty-eight percent Anglo and thirty-two percent. Uh, Hispanic. Uh, we did not, the blacks had their own high school in, in, in elementary and junior high until in 1954, 55 when we integrated. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but they had their own school and uh, the biggest problem in the beginning in the, in the, in the late 20s and early 30s was that uh, once you finished the sixth grade in San Felipe, you had to come to Del Rio. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they had to walk. And um, most kids used to drop out due to the fact that they were real poor, and especially the girls. You know, they were wearing apparels and the dresses and were kind of old fashioned, and they just didn't want to face some of the Anglos and what have you. So, mm -hmm. and very few, like I said, some that were a little bit better off. Uh, Latinos, you know, they, they, they could afford it and, uh, to send their kids uh, in, uh, in a better wardrobe. So. Yeah. But uh, yes, uh, you know, they, it's not that they hit their own school. Then, they, well, of course, on this side, in high school, the uh, Latinos and the uh, Anglos were used to go together. But uh, the uh, Latinos had their own, at one time, they had their own school. They, they were segregated. Yeah. They were segregated there from first uh, through uh, sixth grade. And then until they got to the seven and eighth grade, then they would uh, integrate with them. But other than that, you know, they, they the uh, county of Valverde was controlled by ranchers, hmm. and banks and everything. So whatever they said went. So it, it was a struggle. Yeah. It was a struggle and uh, most of our parents and uh, if they did not, very few had, had uh, permanent jobs here. So I would say that 95% of the families were migrants mm -hmm. at the end of school or before, before May uh, uh, was uh, out. A lot of the parents took their kids uh, to work uh, elsewhere, West Texas, California, and all over the place. So it was not, a, it was not an easy thing way back there. A lot of struggle. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, sometimes you would have to, if you wanted to go to the movie theater, um, Latinos would sometimes have to go into the balcony. The, uh, the, the, that was way before my time. Oh, I see. That was before my, and we had our own theater also, um, Spanish for older people. Yeah, that was a little bit before my time. I um, I don't remember myself. I don't remember going up uh, to the balcony. But other than that, uh, you know, that was way before. But I do remember the swimming pools, and I do remember places downtown where you couldn't go. Like, such as what place? Uh, there was a place, uh, there were places where a pool hall, mm -hmm. and then that pool hall uh, kind of hidden in the back, and uh, where the old, they played cards and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So that was one particular place. Um, I don't remember, I knew at one particular time um, some churches kind of frowned on you 
And I said, don't you all have a, like your own Methodist or Baptist uh, church? But that was like in the 20s, 30s, and the 40s. Since we were Catholics, and we mainly stayed on our own side. We had our, our own church. and uh, But uh, yeah, there was other things going on. And of course, our parents, you know, didn't say too much. You know, uh, they um, um, realized that uh, that would create some problems. And uh, But yeah, on the way to work, like going from here to uh, West Texas, Sonora, we still remember signs uh, in restaurants said no, no dogs or Mexicans allowed. And if you needed to pick up, like my dad needed a coffee, had to go to the kitchen, had his thermal bottle ready, filled it up, and away we go. Hmm. And I knew up there and around the Evelyn area and some places, um, uh, like on Saturdays when we came back and uh, to pick up our merchandise, yeah, you know, we stayed uh, a few hours, went to the movies, and, and there were places that didn't serve us, which was okay, I guess. Uh, we didn't care. We were just young kids, and maybe 10, 11, or 12 at the time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, it was, uh, at the time, that was the environment, you know. But, uh, you know, it, it changed. I think we ourselves changed the environment quite a bit. We um, educated ourselves, came back to our cities, and uh, became politically uh, inclined and started participating in the school board and, and, uh, and with um, city and county uh, uh, um, uh, politics. Uh, uh, in the way back there before um, we had commissioners in, uh, in for the city instead of uh, uh, what you call it, a form of government that we have nowadays, where you have, um, uh, anyway, uh, and, uh, but anyway, we got involved, we, we, we came around and, uh, and started uh, um, moving things a little bit, uh, and, you know, we, we, we didn't, um, carry a big stick or holler or anything. We just, you know, we just wanted to help our people. Sure. Um, um, so did you go to the San Felipe High School? I went to San Felipe High School, yes. I graduated in 1956 from San Felipe. Participated four years in in everything, football, basketball, baseball, and track. What uh, position did you play in football? I, I, I played in the backfield and um, Played everything in the offense, defense, kickoff, and everything. We didn't have too many kids. We had about 27, yeah. 28, so he had to go both ways. Yeah. What um, did you did you often have to travel to di different cities for games? How yeah, we that? were. Yeah, we, we had our own. Uh, in my times, we were in in um, in two A. The classification was two A, and our district was twenty nine. And uh, so our district was composed of a. Uh, Hondo, Pearsall, Cotula, Carrizo, and Crystal City, and ourselves. What was it like going over to the Winter Garden area? Um, oh, I, 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 we had a couple of, uh, we had some incidents that, in, uh, like Crystal City, and the, and the Latinos mainly, mm -hmm. and uh, they used to stone our, our buses. Oh, wow. And, uh, but, uh, you know, that, that went on for a while. Uh, remember one particular time, uh, I was already coaching and must have been 64. And, uh, you know, um, they usually lock our dressing rooms and they, they give the coach a key. I was coaching at the time. And somehow some of their kids got in and stole <laughs> some of the stuff. And I had some, at the time, I used to dress real sharp. I get some alligator shoes and alligator belt, and they didn't take the shoes, but they took the, the belt. <laughs> but uh, uh, and that you know, it, and our biggest problem, like I said, we were a poor school district, and uh, the buses were old, or not the buses, the bus was old, and 
sometimes we had to push oh. the bus because it didn't start. But we, you know, yeah. it, and uh, so it, it was, it, it was something. But we we enjoyed it. We were kids, and uh, so that was part of the growing up. Also, you mentioned that the community back, I guess, back in the twenties helped build uh, San Felipe High. Is that correct? Twenties. Or yeah, it, it, the uh, San Felipe became an independent school district in 1929, okay. and they started building the um, school, and, and the stadium came a little bit later. They used to bring in um, bricks, and uh, the school, the uh, the parents, they uh, made and sold tamales or mm -hmm. or whatever they had and they just to. So we built our own school. And uh, the school was ready in um, 30, and um, 32 was the first year. 29 were the, f 29, 30, 31, 32, yeah. 29 were the, the freshmen started. So in 32, the first graduating class, uh, which included all the Calderons and uh, Dolly's uh, uh, mother and, uh, uh, and aunt, yeah. Can you compare, uh the San Felipe High School that you grew that you graduated from, with Del Rio High, um, were there stark differences in terms of the quality of education, or the 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 facilities? Probably the facilities might have been quite different. Uh, I think the quality was just as good, or maybe in some particular uh, cases, ours might have been. I that's my own opinion. Uh, uh, were better. Um, most of us that went to to colleges, like I went to Texas A and M, I I, um, I didn't have any problem or problems. Um, but that you know that's that's my opinion, and and uh, I would say that our school system, uh, for the best part or the better part, was uh, pretty much like a Del Rio. Um, of course, they get their own opinion about us, mm -hmm. but uh, like my grandfather said, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that uh, Del Rio uh, High was, uh, or the district was 68% uh, Anglo. Anglo and 32% Hispanic thereabouts. Um, where did the 32% Hispanic come from, if not from Felipe? Was there another um, barrio? Yeah, it was another barrio. There was the Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yeah, Chihuahua. C H I H U A H U A. Um, all of these Latinos were pretty much like us. They um, uh, they lived on the other side and they didn't care too much about San Felipe. Hmm. There was some type of jealousy, mainly because at the beginning. We educated more people. We had more lawyers, uh, doctors, and things like that. And they had very few. And then the other part was that we used to hop to uh, from San Felipe to Chihuahua and steal their girlfriends. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't like that. Um, but they 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 went through a lot of discrimination themselves. Yeah. When they were they graduated or junior and senior prom, the uh, Anglos. So the country club, the Chicanos, they had a they had a place where they made a, the San Jose project. They had a big place there, and uh, uh, they had their junior and senior prom there, mm -hmm. and their graduation. Then they had it there. Oh wow! So they couldn't have it at the country club where the Anglo kids had. Not they couldn't have it. Oh, they wow. weren't allowed. <laughs> oh wow! They weren't allowed. So they yeah, at the time, at the time you had golfers. You know, we couldn't play way back there yeah. until we. Uh, I think in the early 60s when they started a line, so I think, uh, you know, some of the first uh, Chicanos or Hispanics that played there were affluent, you know, they, they, they knew and they maybe had their own business or what have you. And until I started playing golf a little bit in 1963 myself, and at the time I, I wasn't a member of the country club. But I could play there and uh, you know pay, pay my uh, my dues and play and uh, and uh, that was about it.
but that we we couldn't join the uh, country club. Wow. Do you remember when that changed? Uh, probably, probably I would say probably around sixty three or four at the time when I started playing. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if we could afford the uh, dues or not. Sure. And then we, you know, we just wanted to play. And there were quite a few of my friends that that later on they started inviting them to go up there, and they were the first ones that became members. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that. You know, then that happens, and uh, some of the diehards that kept us from going there at the time, they're down yonder. So. <laughs> But uh, that, that was, you know, that, that was the way of our life way back there, yeah. So uh, you graduate in 1956? Exactly. Did you go to college? I went to Texas A&M. What, uh, what did um, you study? A&M, uh, uh, I uh, wanted to um, be a coach all the time, so, and I wanted to be a teacher. So I had a double major, biology and physical ed at the time. And... Um, you had to join the um, the core. ROTC was included in the package, and uh, I didn't didn't know how to take orders, so I only I was there for a semester, mm. and I had a chance to uh, to go to Tulsa. I had a baseball scholarship to go to Tulsa University, and then at the time, Alpine Solaris State had a good baseball program, so. Um, one of my friends that was going there told me, why don't you go down there? And uh, said, well, I, David offered me a scholarship. So I went down there and uh, and the baseball coach said, well, look, uh, all of the 16 scholarships that we have for baseball, they're all being used up. Why don't you uh, uh, walk on, you make the team in September, that was, uh, that was in the uh, uh, spring of uh, 57, because I only uh, stayed at A&M for a semester. Said, if you make the, the team, we'll help you out in September. We'll, I think we got five graduates. And we, they did, you know, and I, mean, I, I got on the team and, uh, you know, they, 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 they helped me. Scholarships at the time were, were $68 a month. Mm -hmm. You could pay your room and board with $68. Still had about six dollars left for uh, laundry, <laughs> so can you imagine? Uh, I think um, tuition was twenty-five dollars a semester. Wow. All the hours you could take. In 1959, my senior year, it went up to fifty dollars a semester. All the hours you could take. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what life was like for you at A and M the semester that you were there? Uh, I had to learn mainly how to take orders because that was part of ROTC. But there, there, there was little discrimination going on at the time. Mm -hmm. You didn't have too many Latinos yeah. uh, participating. Most of the Latinos came from, from Laredo and, and maybe San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Affluent because, uh, I mean, at the time, A&M, it was not. It was not like some of these small schools. Uh, tuition, uh, even though it was just twenty-five dollars uh, a semester, there were other things you had to consider, and mm -hmm. you had to be away. Uh, a, uh, college Station is about three hundred and forty miles from here, and you know there was a lot of other expenses. Sure. So at the time, there were only a few parents that could afford that. My dad could at the time, and. Uh, it was uh, a new experience, mm. being away, but uh, you know I I adapted to college immediately, yeah. and I was I had pretty good head on my shoulders, and I just didn't uh, like to take too many orders, <laughs> yeah. and uh, there was a lot of stuff that that was just wasted. Um, especially ROTC, mm -hmm. you had to get up early in March and, and when you came back, you marched and, and uh, but that, that was part of it, you know, it's 
kind of uh, goes in with discipline. Yeah. And uh, but there was a lot of hazing. Yeah. yeah I, the hazing wasn't too bad. I could take it, <laughs> even though sometimes it was physical with the mm -hmm. paddle. Mm -hmm. I could take it. Yeah. But uh, verbally, uh, you know, there were still some individuals, mainly farmers that came from the north of Texas. Yeah. The same people that we used to go and chop cotton, pick cotton for them. Yeah. Their kids, uh, you know, they would look down at, at us. But, uh, hey, uh, you know, most of us could take it. Yeah. And uh, so there and then, uh, you know, you learn a lot of stuff that we, um, in San Felipe, we were kind of sheltered to a certain extent. Uh, um, we all didn't have any problem. We didn't know what... Uh, discrimination was because we're all Hispanic. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. you know, we lived happily ever after there. And uh, But uh, when you went out of uh, your zone, then things are a little bit different. But like I said, uh, you had to. And uh, our parents were real, real good to us. They said, look, uh, you're going to be on your own. You got us here if you need help. But I'm pretty sure you can handle it the uh, whatever uh, the circumstances that will come up and we, we did we did most of our uh, kids our siblings uh, also uh, were there to uh, to defend themselves you know from whatever do you remember or can you call a specific instance of discriminatory treatment when you were at college station uh, Per se, within our, I was in AAA anti-aircraft artillery. We had some sophomores, and these sophomores, they had a privilege to haze us. But we had a couple of uh, Anglo kids that, like I said, came from the north. They were, they were farmers. They, were, they would do anything and everything if they didn't like you. And I could, could see that because in, in our um, battalion, I think we only had about th two or three Latinos. Wow. And our battalion was uh, A troop, B troop, C troop. And we were quite a few. And things that uh, that they wanted for us to do, uh, and, and uh, we had to do them, you know, <laughs> to a certain extent, you yeah. know. And, uh, but uh, there were only uh, a few of them that felt and yeah. I know that a lot of them might have felt a bit different, but they didn't express themselves. But sometimes uh, yeah. uh, their body language speaks more than uh, sure. Yeah, but uh, it, you know it goes with the territory. You know, hey, hey, listen, that was a military school at the time, mm -hmm. seventy-five hundred cadets. Now it's fifty-four thousand. Yeah, and I think the, uh, they were just male school, uh, no females at the time until. I guess the early 60s when they uh, became co-ed, yeah. And so you went to, you eventually ended up at Sol Ross. Sol Ross uh, in, uh, in the uh, spring of 57. How was that experience for you? Uh, it was uh, entirely different and yet here we go again, West Texas, a lot of discrimination. Yeah. Um, but on the, uh, the biggest part was you know, athletics. I was always busy doing something, and uh, but I could, I, I could feel it, and you know, there was no such thing as you could date an Anglo girl. Hmm. You know, they, oh, some of them were nice. They, they said hi to you, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and uh, but for the, for the most part, you know, there were. Salros had a lot of Latinos, a lot of Chicanos, and uh, so we were kind of busy that. It was a small school at the time, and uh, real good school if you wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, so time went fast. I finished there in three years. Mm -hmm. In '59, I was already out. And is that when you came back to teach? I came back and I had a job, and uh, I started uh, teaching. My teaching assignment was at the eighth grade teaching science, but my coaching assignment was at the high school. My um, high school coach, then at the time when I came back, was a head football coach, and uh, he and I took care of the football team, just two of us. 
And then uh, that spring, I was the baseball coach. In my first experience into a 21-year-old 20, kid, I took my kids to the regional. Oh, wow. That's as far as you could have gotten. There was no state playoffs in 2A. And uh, so uh, I was real successful immediately, and, uh, you know. I was there at San Felipe four years and uh, won three districts, uh, two by districts and then regional. And then uh, came over to Del Rio High in 64, 65. Why did you transfer to Del Rio High? Uh, mainly uh, making a little bit more money. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, you know, I, I, we weren't uh, making any money. As a matter of fact, for the coaching part in San Felipe, I was getting paid $150 for the whole year. Gilmer Aiken, what, that was the base pay for teachers way back there in the 50s. The base pay for teachers was $3,214 a year. And plus they added that $150 uh, for coaching. Mm -hmm. $150 a year, not a month. <laughs> so if you divide that, uh, you probably weren't even, you're making about 200 some odd dollars yeah. a month. At San Felipe. At San Felipe. And Del Rio High, I was making all, when I transferred, all $600 for coaching. Wow. For football and baseball. Wow. Uh, you know, and, and, and uh, at the time, you know, um, I, uh, I never did have any problems in Del Rio. Never did have them. And uh, I would say that uh, for the, um, most part, you know, most of my kids in, in football and in baseball were uh, Anglo kids. Yeah. But I, uh, I was a disciplinarian, and uh, so I didn't find any big problems or anything that I couldn't handle. So, uh, were there a lot of uh, Latino teachers at Del Rio High at the time? Selected few. <laughs> how, how, how about how many, sir? I would say like, a, like my teaching assignment was again at the eighth grade level when I transferred to Del Rio. At the junior high, I would say that maybe 20%. Okay. 20%. Maybe at the high school, it might have been at the time, probably less than 10%. Okay. Probably. Yeah, that was in the mid 60s, yeah. And, uh, and you mentioned that you're, you coach mostly Anglo kids. Did you ever have... Uh, well, yeah, for, for the most part, like I said, it, the uh, enrollment was like 68%. So, yeah. you know, uh, hit more in, 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 in baseball than in football. Because, uh, you know, the kids like uh, Latino like more baseball than anything. There was no thing as soccer in high school yeah. way back there. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have had quite a few. Uh, did you did you ever have a problem with any of the Anglo parents? No, I, I never did. Uh, they respected my coaches. They, um, for the most part, uh, they stayed away. Uh, not like today. Yeah, not like today. Well, tell me about um, the. What do you remember? Do you recall late nineteen sixties? There was a big march here in Del Rio. Yeah. Do you remember, can you tell me your recollections of what happened? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you exactly. I don't know what the, the, the rest of the people have been saying. It, the, uh, the people came from Crystal City. It was 1969. At the time, I was the president of the American GI Forum. That's a veterans organization. And um, the uh, March, they, uh, we didn't ask for the, uh, they came and one of the leaders, not leaders, but one that was participating, he was a lawyer that was, that belonged to the American GI Forum. And they had uh, one of our outstanding community leaders, beautiful man, Dr. Fer, uh, Fermin Calderon. He was also a member of the uh, GI Forum. But anyway, they got him involved. We didn't ask for the march, they, they marched. And I think at the time, the Brown Beret were real active and they brought the Brown Beret. 
they had a lot of stuff going in Crystal City. That was the time of Cornejo uh, in, uh, in Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, that particular day, that's when the, most of the Anglo farmers moved out of Crystal City because they took over City Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I, I, I repeat that March was senseless. We didn't have, we didn't have any problem at the time. Who asked for it? I asked Dr. Calderon, he said, no. He said, um, this friend of his that was a lawyer, said, you don't mind if we go down to San Felipe? And I said, Dr. Calderon was the nicest person that you could ever mm -hmm. meet. And uh, so anyway, at the end of the March, we had our own building. And uh, Dr. Gutierrez is a good friend of mine, and, and quite a few uh, older guys. Uh, that was 1969. The former mayor, Dr. Gutierrez. Yeah, the that's mayor. him. That's okay. him. Yeah, and and, uh, and quite of the um, founders of the American GI Forum here in Del Rio. So we went to the building, and uh, at the end of the march, they, they wanted to come in, all of the people. Mm -hmm. And so they knocked on the door, and and they said, uh, "I'm sorry, we we cannot allow you to come in." And he said, "But Dr. Calderon is here." He said, "I understand. I pity Dr. Calderon." <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, so they asked again. We, we, they said, "Okay, we come in." And I said, "No." Mm -hmm. So I didn't and I didn't allow. And I was the president at the time. We I keep repeating. Uh, myself uh, said uh, we didn't have any problems at the time. Um, they came and uh, and I guess later on you've, in the history will tell you that uh, they uh, they messed up at Crystal City and uh, that's why Crystal City Crystal City used to be a nice little city agricultural city. Spanish capital of the world, so mm -hmm. of Texas or, <laughs> or the nation. Now they uh, they had a lot of um, um, factories um, that used to um, can carrots, uh, spinach, and so on. We don't see that anymore. It used it was a nice, prosperous little town. Yet, pretty much like Del Rio. 95% of the families were migrants. They didn't have uh, not enough work there, so they, they went all over the state of Texas and elsewhere. So what, what, was, what is your, you said the march, you believed it to be senseless? Yes, uh, on our part, yes. Because to me, it didn't make any sense uh, why uh, why are you doing this? And they, they just wanted to exercise the, the people from Crystal City that uh, that apparently they must have had some problems up there. But we didn't have any. This is '69 now. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of people in uh, in City Hall, in the county, what have you, and uh, you know we were getting. The, uh, our people were getting along just, I see. I see. just well. I see. And when you when you say we had a lot of people, you mean Latin, more Latinos were in city hall, city government. Well, we, let's say we had our where we could make decisions. Like, uh, you know, um, at the time um, until '65, it was three. Um, it was a commission form. There were three commissioners. And then. Uh, Later on, they, they changed it to, uh, I think there are seven council members now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a form of council. And uh, so, you know, you hit enough to uh, where somebody made a motion, somebody would make a second and, and uh, might have, it only took four votes. And, and uh, so you had representation mm -hmm. see. at the time, yeah. And um, were any of your well, I, were you still teaching eighth grade at this time? At the same time, yeah, I didn't move until 67, I moved to high school. Okay. They, uh, they opened up a biology uh, uh, position. They did, someone left, and I, so I took over. Yeah. And, and then um, that, 
that uh, in 68, we opened up the new school, that school that's there in Del Rio. That was brand new. Uh, and um, we were there, well, I was there until we consolidated in 71. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just lived there a couple of blocks from the old San Felipe High School. So when we consolidated, some of the uh, San Felipe teachers, they wanted to teach at the new high school, Del Rio. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them was a good friend of mine. Uh, and uh, if he wants to change, I'll tell you what, I'll go down to San Felipe and let him teach, take my job here. And uh, so we did. I, I uh, became a teacher at uh, ninth grade there. It was the ninth grade when we consolidated the old San Felipe High School. And uh, some of the uh, some of the teachers were uh, taught there at the old at the new high school. Did any of your your students uh, participate in the march that you're aware of in 1969? No, mm -hmm. I think I think most of these uh, were from outside. Okay. There were quite a few uh, from here, but uh, not as many as the, the ones that came from uh, okay. from Crystal City. Okay. No, no. So tell me about the uh, consolidation. Why did that occur, and um, what did you, what did the community think about it? Well, mainly, uh, and to be honest, I don't think financially, San Felipe could have opened up in September, in the fall of '71, due to the fact that. Uh, they didn't have enough money. They were broke to a certain extent. Um, of course, just like anything else, uh, they, mm, a lot of teachers in the community were afraid of consolidation because uh, they didn't know what to expect. But for the most part, I think um, Del Rio, at the time, I'm not saying it was prosperous, but they had more to offer, uh, more courses, uh, and um, for the betterment of both, I would say that uh, that was a good move, although a lot of parents at the time didn't, didn't, didn't want to. And the kids were used to, uh, like I said, there was no discrimination. and and, and, I, and I did not find that much discrimination when we consolidated. We had some problems with some of the kids from the base, but uh, uh, lots of us that were dis disciplinarians, we took care of the, of the problem. Yeah, we had some fight, but not as many as people would think, you know. But uh, but I tell you what, in less than a year, you know, things kind of settled. Yeah, you know, everything uh, uh, started. Uh, rolling like they were supposed to. And um, most of the kids were happy. The only kids that weren't happy were the class of 72 from San Felipe. They wanted to graduate in San Felipe. Mm -hmm. So they had to graduate in Del Rio. Yeah. And they still, they, they don't consider, that class doesn't consider themselves as San Felipe and Del Rio class of 72. Consider, uh, San Felipe graduated to 72. There were no such thing as 72 because <laughs> 71 was the last yeah. last class. Um, but that went with the territory. It, it's, it's sensitive uh, at the time, but there was no no problems at the time, 69 uh, or 71, that you would say, oh, yeah, we we the last three years, we moved up to uh, 3A, and Del Rio was in our district. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was coaching at the time. The first game that San Felipe played Del Rio football, San Felipe beat Del Rio. Hmm. The second time we played each other in 70, Del Rio beat San Felipe by touchdown. And in 19, 1970, the football season 70, in 70, No one scored, it was a tie game. <laughs> so each one won a game, so it was 68, 69, and 70. Mm. So San Felipe in 60, 
A, sem, uh, they were won in 69, in the football season of 70. Um, it was a tied game, and of course the graduates were 71, so that was the last class. Yeah. Do you remember why the court decided that the schools ought to be consolidated? If, if I remember correctly, you know, that happened in Tyler, Texas. Um, I think it had to do with the economical problems. It had to do also... See, um, I hate to say this, but... Um, See, Laughlin Air Force Base belonged to San Felipe. Mm -hmm. We did not have a superintendent during that time or before that could see light at the end of the tunnel. If they would have been smart, they would have catered to the federal government mm -hmm. and the federal government would have built a new high school in San Felipe. At the time, most of the uh, Laughlin kids belonged to San Felipe, but they transferred um, um, paper and they went to Del Rio. All, even some of the civil workers, uh, civil service workers and what have you. But going back again, if we would have had a superintendent uh, to have looked into it, I think the government would have yeah. built a new high school and, and San Felipe would have been in a better shape. Why do you think uh, the base students m transferred to Del Rio High? Why not just go to San Felipe? I would say, uh, I mean, honestly, they, they thought they would get a better education. Mm. I mean, that's the bottom, bottom line. And I mean, I, I don't want to say that maybe because most of the kids were Anglos. Sure. I mean, I don't want to say that. But uh, maybe, I, I mean, I, that's my opinion. Uh, yeah. and, but uh, I never did sense anything. I was at Del Rio at the time. Yeah. My kids, all the kids that I had, and I had some kids that played ball, you know, but uh, I never did. Would you say San Felipe at that time was a poor school district? R uh, yeah, real poor. As a matter of fact, I, I go back, it's uh, the uh, financially, I don't think they had enough money. You, nowadays, uh, even way back, you have to have a a, um, a fund balance of so much money in, in case something goes wrong so you can pay your teachers. Mm -hmm. Simply we didn't have that um, for payroll. My understanding of how funding of public schools in Texas work is part of the money, large, large part of the money that, that public schools need to use to survive comes from local property taxes. Um, yes, that's where that's where you can you give your teachers a raise, mm -hmm. where you can build more schools, mm -hmm. uh, where you can, you know, just do just about anything that you need to. Uh, we did have a base uh, yeah. in San Felipe. We had uh, those moms, uh, pops and moms stores all over the place. Mm, no other buildings. You know, we had a, a little furniture store. Um, gotcha. Most of them were just little grocery stores or tax money. But in most of those homes, I mean, I mean, in, there weren't, uh, in other words, uh, the property was, uh, uh, wasn't worth that much at the time. Yeah. So you would say that the, the property tax revenue, perhaps in San Felipe, wasn't enough to provide, um, um, it provided a decent education, but it, it didn't provide all the extras that perhaps Del Rio say, could. Or, or to bring in maybe more teachers or, or more of, a, of something. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's exactly, you're exactly right. Do you know if the, the Air Force Base, if Laughlin paid um, property taxes? At the time? Yes, sir. I think the federal government is exempt from, um, is exempt, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, but see, now federal money, like if you, if you had like Border Patrol kids that their parents worked civil service or whatever, they, they would get, that school would get extra monies for that. Yeah. So, 
even at that, or they get kids going, you know, that would offset some of the, that would be like, I'm not saying tax money, but that would be um, monies that would have helped out also. But since most of the kids, most of the kids, I'd say, 90 some odd percent went to Del Rio. So we uh, actually, we didn't have a, in our homes, uh, our houses were poor, so you didn't get that much. Yeah. Some couldn't even afford to pay taxes. Yeah. Let me ask you something, sir. Part of the reason that um, the students were marching in 1969 was that they felt that the, the, the level of education that they were receiving wasn't adequate. And, um, was that at San Felipe? Uh, well, at the, the big march, part of the reason uh, of that march that's was... What, that's what some of the people have been saying. Yeah. Um, and if San Felipe, if the property tax wasn't enough to like sustain and provide all the extras for the San Felipe students, it just seems, as an outsider, it just seems to me that maybe some of the marchers had a point. I don't know. What do you think, sir? Um, yeah, you have a good point there. Uh, in an opinion, they, uh, you know, you, they, they were entitled to their opinion. But going back again, like I said, most of those people that marched, most of them, they, they were students. They weren't from here. Sure. But to the few, and uh, you, you find it, and, and uh, for whatever reason, it was 69. That, and and there was, those were tough years. Now, you uh, remember me saying that uh, they didn't have enough money uh, to have started in 19... 71? Oh, right. If San Felipe would have uh -huh, been. Yeah. Um, probably at the time, things were... I know that they were hard. Because yeah. I had some friends that were coaching. I had some friends that went to school with me. And I know that, um, like, uh, athletic equipment and stuff like that, it was hard to find yeah. or to get. And that's why they had to go outside. We had a San Felipe club in San Jose, California. They used to send money so, you know, they could buy uh, to offset uh, the cost of, of athletics, right. buy uniforms or, or buy stuff for the kids. Yeah, my, 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 uh, um, economical situation at the time was probably the biggest problem. Yeah. And But I don't think that would uh, have created an inferior uh, teaching uh, uh, environment. Sure. But that's my opinion also. No, fair enough. That's my opinion. Um, so you were the president of the American GI, GI Forum. Forum at the time of during the march, yes sir. What, um, how many years were you involved with the GI Forum and what would they do in the community? Uh, education mainly help out. Uh, and again, um, you know, uh, just Kind of a civil rights, you know, keeping an eye on things, you know. Uh, th that was the reason that the American GI Farm started. You know the, the story behind GI Farm? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and uh, so uh, Dr. Calderon was one of the charter members mm -hmm. of the American GI Farm. And uh, then uh, we had another one here, Mr. Julio Ramos. And, um, but... Um, in all, you know, um, the American GI Forum, you know, we had so many scholarships at the time, and, uh, you know, and then we had a place where, you know, the kids could gather and uh, the families could have quinceaneras or they could have uh, dances or weddings. And uh, so it kind of provided uh, as something for them also. Uh, service for the service community. for the community, sure. yes. Um, was there a... Uh, chapter of LULAC here? At the time, yes. Were you a part of LULAC, sir? No, no. We, and, As a matter of fact, uh, LULAC and GI Forum were, I'm not saying contradicting, but uh, two different uh, I see. Uh, entities. Yeah. Well, um, from your perspective, why? What, what is the difference there? I, you know, uh, LULAC was an older club. Mm -hmm. GI Forum was established due to the fact that uh, whatever happened at Three Rivers, and uh, and I think the Yelulek uh, were here before we were, mm -hmm. and they felt like from day one 
you know, they were discriminated. But the Lulex, for the most part, in those days, they just worked with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, they really, at the beginning, they didn't really go outside and 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 tack, tackle the uh, the Anglo environment mm -hmm. until later on. You know, you had you had guys that were educated with the Lulex, and then they would go to court for for whatever you know, and that was for civil rights. Sure. Uh, American GI Forum was mainly for veterans. Mm -hmm. Although I wasn't a veteran, but uh, I could be um, the uh, local president, but I couldn't move up to state uh, president. Oh, really? uh, or now they call it commander or na mm -hmm. national commander or what have you. But uh, I, I, I could be uh, the, um, um, at the time, uh, that was about the only thing that I could do. Uh, did you? Uh, how long were you in the GI Forum? Or are you still a part of it? No, I um, in the I left the GI Forum in seventy eight. Seventy eight. I was there probably uh, sixties. I was there almost sixties, uh, seventy, almost twenty years. Hmm. Yeah, twenty years. So um, my understanding is that you continue to teach in Del Rio for the next. How many years, sir? I retired in 99. Oh, my goodness. I put in 40 years. Wow. Started in 59 start and, and, uh, and finished in 99 wow. as the athletic director. Wow. Can you tell me some of the changes over time? Like, what, um, during your long tenure at Del Rio High, like, how have things changed in terms I, of... You know, it's slowly, but, uh, you know, things are, are a whole lot better for, for everybody. Of course, it was hard. At the beginning, uh, you know, um, we hit um, mainly on account of the parents, you know, and, you know, the kids would get along in one area. Mm -hmm. But uh, in a period of time, I would say three, four years, kind of bonded with each other, and and, uh, and kids from San Felipe were a heck of a lot better off. Mm -hmm. They hit uh, more things to offer, yeah. and. Um, um, it was in the new beginning, new environment. It was the best. We no feuds or anything. It was just one school school yeah. district, one school, one high school. Are you a part of the um, San Felipe X's? The yes. As a matter of fact, I was president for San Felipe X's for quite a few years. Oh, can you tell me about that organization? That um, that actually uh, started in San Jose, California. And it started, I guess you remember that uh, for athletics, they didn't have enough money, uh, they, you know, uniform stuff like that. And one of my friends uh, was a coach at the time, and he reached down to San Jose, and the, um, the founder of San Felipe was Robert Rodriguez. He hit a, a San Felipe club in San Jose. So they, by having dances and stuff like they raised some money, I think, mm -hmm. to the tune of by maybe about $2,500. And $2,500 way back there, with the bar, sure. you know, some stuff. And uh, so later on, Robert moved down back to uh, San Felipe to Del Rio, and he started in 80, I think in 84. He started the uh, San Felipe X's. Is and that how the uh, San, is that where the San Jose connection comes from? Did people like move to San Jose and then they? Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Most of them, they only got together when they had dances and stuff like. And they had a big dance up there, and they started their own reunion. Here we started in 1978, San Felipe X's and. Every five years, we had one in 78, one in 83, one in 88, one in 93, uh, one in 98, and 203, 203, and then um, in 208, that was the last one, for, then we moved it up in three years, and then the last two that we had every two years. Mm -hmm. So next year, uh, 17, we'll have a, 
but we'll have um, another reunion. Yeah. So so we've been we've been here since 1978. As a matter of fact, right now when I was cleaning up, I came across a lot of stuff. Why why do you guys have that um, that that club or that organization? Simply Yeah. We we gave out we gave out 37 scholarships this year. Oh wow. We have our own museum. Have you seen our museum? Yes, sir. It was closed when we went by, but we want yeah. to go back. Yeah, well, let me know. I'll get the keys. <laughs> um, uh, and we have a, a place where, you know, for the community where, they, mm. uh, you know, they can have dances or, or bridal parties or weddings, or they can have quinceaneras. It's small. I think the capacity is 110. Mm. So we rent that out at real discount for the community and um, you know sometimes you know we help other like city clubs and stuff like that uh, you know yeah um so the del Re del rio's new mascot is the uh, ram right now it is what was san felipe mustangs and the uh wildcats wildcats so gra you're a graduate this is, yeah this is the wildcat okay uh, well i was gonna ask you're a graduate from san felipe, san felipe. Do you consider yourself a Mustang, or do you consider yourself, what, a Ram now, since you taught in the district for so many years? Uh, since I taught in, in, in all three districts, mm. uh, I mean, it's just like a parent, uh, you know, I said, I don't have a choice. I, I, I like my kids. <laughs> They're all the same to me. Yeah. And I would say, but yet, in your heart, you know, the roots are in San Felipe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it, I was loyal. As a matter of fact, one of my calling cards, uh, um, um, uh, I have all pictures. Can you cut it for a while? Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, going back again when uh, when you asked me about, about, you know, are you more loyal to San Felipe, Del Rio High, or the, or the, the consol consolidation of the rims? And, uh, and I remember one particular time they asked this uh, mother, they said, well, did you favor any of your kids? I said, yes. I favored the one that was sick until he got well. <laughs> and, and I favored the other one when he left, and then when he came back home. You know, that was a smart answer, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, the thing about it, it was that, uh, yeah, I, I mean, your roots, don't forget your roots, where you came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's exactly, but hey, I, I've been loyal to all three districts, 40 years. Coached, all, I'm the only one that coached all three, the Mustangs, the Wildcats, and then the Rams. And then I became athletic director for, for Del Rio High in 92, and, and I retired in 99. Wow. So i uh, been there, done that. And, <laughs> Let me ask you uh, as a as a sort of final question. Um, do you think, um, based on your long experience, do you think the the consolidation was a good move for uh, the community of Del Rio? I would say, as a professional and as an individual, as a teacher, in all three school districts, I would say that perhaps the best thing that happened. Not to San Felipe, not to Del Rio, but to the community. Yeah. And um, it took time, but uh, for the most part, like I like I said, uh, you know, kids get adjusted a little bit faster than parents. Mm. And of course, uh, uh, there was some parents that at the beginning, uh, but now the. But the worst thing about it now is that, uh, you know, now we only have one one high school, mm -hmm. and the kids don't have the roots like we did for San Felipe, or the kids that had, the, had the roots for the Del Rio at the time. Uh, it's just like a man without a country, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying it's just that it's not there. The spirit is not there yeah. like it used to. You why, know. Do you, why do you think that's the case? Uh, I think it has to do with uh, the way we, I say we, uh, I'm, 
I'm old school, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty much like my parents, and my parents were pretty much like their parents. Uh, the way you raise your kids, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is. So some parents, they didn't have any roots. Like I said, some of these people that, uh, that were migrants and they never did educate themselves, oh, they never did have roots and whatever. So their kids grew up and, you know, mm -hmm. without roots to a certain extent, maybe without religion also. And, and religion plays a, an important role in our lives. Sure. And some, I hate to say that even some of my friends that are educated, uh, you know, uh, for the most part, they, uh, they, they're, they're Christians, but uh, they, they, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. That's about it, yeah. Um, well, uh, the final question, if there's anything that we haven't talked about that you'd like to explore right now, please feel free to do, do so. No, the only thing is that, uh, you know, um, I'm real proud that um, that I'm one of the few that are left uh, from uh, the old school. I mean, and, or the culture, and um, it's a dying culture. Yeah. Most of our kids uh, they get educated, they don't come back. Yeah. I have three kids: one in San Antonio, has a good job. My uh, younger son he lives in Houston has his own business. Yeah. Oh, okay. and my daughter lives in Dallas and um, she has her own job and everything. It's a dad. They don't have what we specialize in and they don't pay like in big cities. Mm -hmm. and, and on top of that, our lifestyle is different. And, you know, I have a concert, they don't have this, and they don't have that. Or the, my daughter likes to, she just got back from Europe about two weeks ago. And prior to that, about a month before that, they had gone into Mexico for a while. Mm -hmm. So they, it, it, it's, a, it's a new breed. Yeah. And, and you know, like you guys, it's, it's uh, I mean, very few. Do you come from a small town? No, sir, I come from San Antonio. Well, that's right. No, you know, but kids that come from small towns and one day, they don't go back. Yeah. Maybe even smaller than Del Rio, you know, they don't. I mean, especially if they, uh, if they um, specialize like in engineering or, or they're doctors or, or, or research scientists yeah. or whatever, I mean, Del Rio doesn't have anything to offer. But the few of us when, and, uh, that came back, um, I would say that uh, it helped quite a bit because it, it changed, it paved the way for, uh, for others that came later. Um, it, 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 overall, you know, Del Rio, it's, uh, it's a beautiful city. It's uh, to, uh, to bring up your families. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that's my opinion, you know. Uh, uh, it's not a fast paced city. Uh, I have a lot of friends that now live in this. Oh my goodness. Even in San Antonio, mm -hmm. I got uh, two sisters and a brother. And, uh, but he, uh, he said, uh, we love it on account that, you know, there's a lot of things and the hospitals are there. And, uh, but other than that, uh, you know, my brother comes here every, <laughs> every other week in one area. And, uh, but it's, uh, it, it's different. You know, Time changes, yeah, and we change with the time. The the time, the time don't change. We change things for our environment. That's and that's what it is, you know. Uh, but it's been good for everybody. I would say uh, I wish my uh, my granddaddy and my grandmother they died. Uh, my granddaddy died in '62, the one that came from Mexico in 1892. So I wish he was alive so you could see all of the changes, mm -hmm. all of the different changes yeah. that technology has uh, provided. But, uh, you know, in, in probably 50 or 75 years from now, maybe one of my grandkids would say, ah, I wish uh, grandpa or great grandpa and Lupe would be here to see how, how we travel from San Antonio to London in two hours, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's, uh, 
But um, hey, we got to stay with the times and everything. So, well, Mr. Lupe Deoyos, yes, thank sir. you very much for the. We interview. thank you, Mr. Stephen, and uh, appreciate.